a bright star in our community, and very many of us. Yeah. <laughs> My personal experience, I uh, wanted to let you know that uh, I was not even two when uh, we, the, the revolution started. My family left Iran in the mid-1980s for a better life for themselves and their children. Uh, my parents, like many other parents in Iran, saw the dream of raising a family, watching their children grow in peace, evaporated, and turned into a nightmare very suddenly. My family did the same, and uh, as many and fled Iran for a better life uh, for themselves and us to Canada. For most of us, uh, this was a choice. For some, it was a choice, but for many, it wasn't. It, they did it um, merely as a, it was a matter of life and death. Something that most of us in the West cannot even fathom. They witnessed a regime that almost immediately began to systematically violate the rights of religious minorities and persecute many of its own citizens for simply not sharing their hardline views. Forty years later, the Iranian government continues to face criticism from within Iran and the international community on its international on its uh, human rights record. Systematic arrests are being made, mistreatment and torture of political prisoners and religious minorities. Sadly. Iran is still one of the leading executioners in the world and has continued on this path even as the international community, a community has been calling them to allow process and justice. Within the last 40 years, many brave Iranian and women, and I would like to highlight the fact that we have seen many who have been bravely standing up for human rights and democracy, and I am proud to, to say many of them have been brave women in Iran, and we thank you very much for that. In doing so, most of these uh, champions of human rights paid the ultimate price for trying to stand up to the regime. But what the Iranian regime does not seem to comprehend is the will of these brave men and women. History has proven that Iranians are resilient and will fight adversity with courage. They will not give up until freedom and democracy is attained. This may only be a dream to many Iranians as they strive towards a free and peaceful nation. But on this 40th anniversary, we, outside of Iran, are joining our brothers and sisters in their quest for peace, freedom, and democracy. In closing, I would like to thank uh, my dear uh, friend, Mrs. Zahri Moedin, and the Iranian National Council for Free Elections for organizing this event. The courageous speakers and all the attendees for supporting this great cause. I would, like to, uh, I would also like to thank my uh, very many good colleagues from all levels of government for being here and supporting this great initiative. Folks in Canada, we're lucky to live in a country that we have free elections um, and we're allowed to express ourselves. Uh, we are able to live in peace and practice our faith and religion in any way that we want. Uh, but let's not forget that this isn't something that most people uh, can, um, can practice. So on this day and every day, please remember those, keep them in your thoughts, and support these initiatives because they will go a long way. Once again, many thanks to Dr. Murray, uh, Professor Cocker, Mr. Sassi, uh, Mr. Levitt, and all uh, the speakers that will be uh, sitting on the panel here. I look forward to listening to all of them, and thank you for your support.